So this afternoon, it's time for my number 18 of my countdown for favourite best rock records of 2023. And I had to put this one in, even though it's had quite a lot of crap from people who don't like it, and I don't understand why. Because to me, this is a good record. It's a good rock record. Okay, it's essentially a covers album, but it, the geezer we're talking about does that a lot. And the person I'm talking about is Paul Gilbert and the Dio album. Now, as I say, it's had a lot of crap and I don't understand why. It's really, really good. It's the 18th studio record that he's done solo. Um, he's worked in the past with Bracer X and Mr. Big, most notably. Those are the bands he's known for. But he's obviously a great fan of Dio and other classic rock acts. I mean, he's got a whole plethora of records similar to this as a tribute to other people, to other bands, other artists. Presumably bands that he grew up listening to. Like we all did. I mean, he's around about the same age as me. So we're a similar generation. Um, and so I think this record just shows a certain amount of respect and love for the music of Dio, whether it be Rainbow, whether it be solo stuff or Sabbath. <clears throat> I've been listening to it since it pretty much came out. It took me a little bit, but a bit by surprise. I had no idea it was going to come out. It came out in about April. And the songs we have on here, let's just see what we've got. I mean, obviously, you've got Paul Gilbert basically doing everything on here. Guitar, bass, production. But he does have a drummer. Somebody called Bill Ray on drums. More of him later. But as far as the songs on here, it starts off of Black Sabbath's Neon Nights, which is a good version. Stand Up and Shout from Dio's first album. You know what that's called. Um, obviously Man on the Silver Mountain. Then we have a cracking version of Holy Diver. Didn't know what to expect when I heard Holy Diver. I thought, is this going to be as strong as the original? But actually it is. He gets all the little nuances bang on. Even that little bit at the beginning where Dio sort of vocalises but doesn't actually say a word. He's just vocalising. He even includes that. So the way he's done it is, this is an instrumental album. This is an instrumental album. And so the way he's done it is he's replaced the voice with the guitar. And it's very interesting. It's a good technique. It's probably nothing new, but it's the first time I've heard anybody do this. And maybe that's why I like it so much, because it's new to me. Um, as I was saying, yeah. so the beginning bits of Holy Diver were Ryan James Dio is vocalising but not actually saying words. He even puts that in. Those little nuances. And that's what I like about this record. It's clearly been crafted and thought out with love, care and attention. I like that. Then you've got uh, Long Live Rock and Roll, Lady Evil. I love the bass playing on Lady Evil. So clearly disguising great bass player as well as you know his shredding ability which he's known for and then and then it finishes with the last in line which is very good as well but like i say it's those little tiny nuances from mr gilbert which make this such a memorable experience it got a lot of crap it did get quite a bit of crap from um, the uh, critics, but again, what do they know? I don't understand why it got crap, because I think it's done with... Unless they're trying to say that he's basically just sort of progr programmed a computer to do this, all the little nuances and things, that he hasn't come up with that himself. He's just got a computer to do it, I don't know. But I doubt it. But nowadays, with AI technology, you never know what you're listening to. 
whether it is a computer, whether it's come from a human heart. Has this come from a human heart? Well, the little I know about Paul Gilbert, I'm going to say it has. This is an affectionate, loving tribute to somebody Paul Gilbert grew up listening to. It's obviously a very personal record to him. Um, even though there's not a word on it, it's all guitar. But yeah, what I was going to say about Bill Ray, the drummer, well, even on some, even on the, um, obviously Dio's career covers 30 years, something like that, and so the drum sounds are going to change. But on this, he's managed to replicate that as well. Now, whether that was done with a computer program or not, I sincerely hope not. I sincerely hope that thought was given to the drums as well, and that drums were tuned to a 1970s tuning or a 1980s tuning, depending on what they were playing. I sincerely hope that's the truth. Um, I don't know who Bill Ray is, but I don't think Paul Gilbert would employ somebody who was a bit of a numpty. I doubt that very, very much. So I think any sort of cynical reviews about this, and I've read some, a bit snotty, a bit snooty, nose in the air, bit of that going on on the reviewers. I think, no, this has been done from the heart. This is a record from the heart. And if you haven't heard it or you've been put off listening to it and you're a fan of Dio's music over the decades, well, you really should hear it because it's very, very good. And it's a great effort and it's clearly come from a good place. And that is one of the reasons I have put this as my number 18 of the year and the countdown to my number one and best rock record of 2023. So at number 18, Paul Gilbert and the Dio album. You should definitely, if you're a Dio fan, in any of his incarnations, at least check it out once. Because I think, I genuinely believe that you'll like it. <laughs>